I'm Philip Ward, Editor-in-Chief of AntMiniEurope.com. Brexit, the planned exit of the UK from the EU, is very much on people's minds. And I'm pleased to welcome here today Professor Fiona Gilbert from Cambridge. Fiona, thank you for joining us this morning. It's a pleasure. Could you um, give us the perspective of a scientist, a researcher such as yourself? What would Brexit mean for you? So the implications for the University of Cambridge are disastrous. We get a huge amount of funding from the EU. Uh, we have huge number of European collaborations. We love working with Europe. They very much um, have, a, have a similar healthcare system in, in many countries. To us, there's many similarities. And so the work that we do with Europe is really important to the UK. It allows us to fast track. And us leaving the, U, uh, the EU means that we no longer have access to this enormous amount of research funding. So Cambridge is going to have to find other sources of funding to replace that. Half my department is from Europe. So what we're very keen to see is easy um, immigration um, and, and migration back and forth um, to and from the UK because we want these excellent scientists from Europe to come and work with us. We want to be able to allow UK people to go and work in the wonderful European centres. Is there, so is there anything you can do in terms of lobbying, in terms of, well, of, of action? Is there anything anything perhaps some of our, our readers here today, our oh, viewers could do? Absolutely. I mean, we would like the, the, the UK government to negotiate very easy movement of the scientists. Brazil has a brilliant system where they have science without borders and I think that's a fantastic policy which would allow our scientists to move freely um, um, into the European countries and likewise European scientists, doctors could move freely into the UK. I think that would be a wonderful positive thing to come out of Brexit. So you're keeping your fingers crossed that this becomes a reality? Oh, I suppose I'm always an optimist, but I, th I think we have, to, we have to take the positive as aspects of, of, of Brexit. I think we have to ensure that our European partners don't think that we're rejecting them. It's actually we still want to work with them even more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, on Saturday, you're giving the honorary lecture at ECR about breast cancer screening. Yeah. Um, you were involved this morning in the opening press conference. Could you explain a little bit about the controversies and the and the and the issues in breast cancer screening at the moment? Oh, absolutely. I mean. I think there's good evidence that uh, mammography screening does save lives. Um, the controversy is that you know we spend an enormous amount of money, we invite huge numbers of women, um, and probably about 20% of the cancers that we diagnose are this overdiagnosis. And by that, I mean cancers that women they would never have known they had a cancer had they not come for a screening test. And I think we have to be very thoughtful as to how we offer screening. Another big problem we have is breast density. And the Americans have taken the initiative here in about half the states in America, they say we must tell women if they've got very dense breasts. And the reason that they believe this is because about 10% of women in our screening program have extremely dense breast mm -hmm. tissue and it means the mammogram is only slightly better than tossing a coin. Mm -hmm. It's only 60% sensitive. Mm -hmm. So in that 10% of the population we should be offering maybe an additional test like whole breast ultrasound or contrast enhanced mammography or abbreviated MRI but something in addition to straightforward mammograms, Excellent. where we know it, it's a test, not yeah. enough. I think one of the aspects that you're encouraging yourself is quality, an emphasis on quality and selecting patients better for screening. Is, how, could you explain a little about that, about Absolutely. how quality can so play I, a role? So I think one of the really positive aspects of the population screening program that was introduced in the UK was this emphasis on quality. We wanted to have the best equipment, we wanted to make sure that the examinations the radiographers were taking were as good as they possibly could be and we wanted to make sure that the radiologists and radiographers who were reading the examinations um, were performing to you know, a really good standard. So this emphasis on, on you know, quality, quality, quality was, was, was absolutely there and has always been there. So it meant that the breast community, my generation of radiologists had been brought up with Big Brother looking over our shoulder going, we want you to record how good you are, 
how many cancers you're, you're missing, you know, how many cancers you're detecting, and we do performance testing. And I think that's one of the great lessons that can be then transferred into other areas of our practice. You know, it, it applies to all different subspecialties that we should be keeping a very close eye on quality. Excellent. So I think that's a, okay. it's a really important now, um, area. Thomas synthesis is the exciting buzzword, if you like, in breast, breast imaging at the moment. Yeah. Are, you, are you yourself very supportive of Thomas synthesis as yeah, a technique? Yeah, we, we, we did a big trial. Uh, which we published a couple of years ago in Toma Synthesis and the, the, the two big observational studies show that there was an improvement of 30% of invasive cancer detection, which are the ones we want to be finding, and that we also reduced our recall rates, mm -hmm. which was phenomenal. We stopped calling back women unnecessarily. So Toma Synthesis looks really, really promising. One of the question marks over Toma Synthesis is what type of cancers what, so Thomas does find these additional cancers, and are these important cancers? Are these cancers that women would never have known about? Or are these the cancers that we're actually missing? Mm -hmm. And I think the really important thing about Thomas synthesis is to look at the type of cancers that are being found, but also to look and see if the interval cancers, the ones that appear between the screens, whether we're getting a reduction in those numbers. And I think if we can show that from the big randomised trials that are now taking place, one in the UK Prospects, one in America, Teamist, and um, also Norway and Italy, if these trials show that we drop our miss rate or interval cancer rate, then I think we should definitely be adopting That's the technology. positive news, excellent. How does this affect costs? Because it, I think it's very much on people's minds that, that a new technique, a, yeah. something extra, something maybe more more time intensive. In, indeed, um, I mean if we're, we're adding an additional techniques or, or, or better techniques which often are more expensive, then we need to be much more thoughtful about who we're inviting. And it looks as though from this big investment we've had in, in genomics, that we can begin to identify using SNPs, you know, small fragments of, of, of the gene, we can identify those women who are at very high risk and those women who are at very low risk. And it may be that the women who are at very low risk, we should be thinking hard about how often we should be screening them. Now, the UK has the, got the biggest interval. We screen every three wow. years. Um, but in fact, maybe three years is fine for those women. And in fact, maybe f every five years is OK mm -hmm. for, the, for the women, the 20% of the population at the lowest risk of developing breast cancer. And so then what we could do is then we could reinvest our energies into the people who are at the highest risk of developing breast cancer. And if they've got very dense breasts, then giving them better technology better tests. Excellent, good. Fascinating stuff. Very in enjoyed talking with you. Um, if, you've, if, you, if this has given you um, a feeling of that you want to hear more, Professor Gilbert is giving the honorary lecture on Saturday. Um, best of luck with it and Thank best of luck this much. week in Vienna. Great. This is Philip Ward signing off for AuntMiniEurope.com. <laughs>